welcome back to another episode. Here I should have all the pieces I need to space out the steering wheel as far as it needs to come out. So I have a 75mm spacer, a 25mm spacer, a short hub and a quick release and a flat 330mm steering wheel. I need to modify this 25mm spacer, I need to drill through all the way through the spacer and then it will fit directly onto the hub. Now I have the 12mm ID tube that I can make the gear shift extension with. It fits nicely over the short shifter so I will cut it and angle it as I need to while the tap and then I can fit the nylon shifter on the top. steering wheel in position and the gear shifter in place I now have to figure out where I can put the handbrake. I have a tower handbrake so it can't get in the way of the gear shifter and also I need to be able to reach it when I'm fully buckled into the seat and it needs to be in a practical place that isn't going to foul anything else. <laughs> I have come to realize there is very little space around the gear selector so in order to determine exactly where I can put the hydraulic handbrake I have to get the gearbox in and shim the quick shifter so I know exactly how much throw I have and therefore how much space I have around it so for now I will get the engine bay ready to put the engine in because I want to get that in before I can start on the clip as well I will think about getting the gearbox in very soon so I can continue on the setup of the internal parts.
question is, is to crane or not to crane? It's not too heavy, but it's awkward. nice to see an engine finally in obviously I will probably take it out to do bits and pieces but I just want to continue with this front clip assembly so I need to know exactly how much clearance I have just to give you an idea of how close it is is if I I'll bolt this on loosely but you can see how close this clip is to the engine so I may even have to modify the part slightly where it comes around the cam cover but otherwise it's um, a pretty good fit. As you can see, we now have the intercooler, so I can go ahead and try and finish the clip. I also have a good indication of how much clearance I need for the cam covers, so I can modify this part of the clip slightly. The reason I have gone for a tube and fin intercooler is because it's better suited for a rally application. The tube and fin design is better for on and off power rather than sustained power like oval racing or circuit racing. So. It is 300 by 600 and it has three inch inlet and outlets. Before I go ahead and bolt everything on the front end, I will just take the corner off of this clip. You can see where the bottom light bracket is. It will just start to foul the engine as I tip it back. At the moment, the engine's tilted forward slightly. So when I push it back, it's just catching there. So I'll take the clip off, cut it back so the engine can tilt and then put everything back on and then we'll continue. bumper on and I'm much happier with the gap around the lights both sides it still needs some trimming but it will get there 
I'm really happy with the gap I have between the bumper and the front of the engine. I'm hoping I'll have room to mount the intercooler with enough space from the engine and also have some kind of slam panel that I can run on the inside of the bumper so if I have a small impact it doesn't destroy the engine. probably sit around there so I have a good amount of space from the engine, slight clearance from the bumper and I can still I can run a slam panel if I need to. You can immediately see the benefit of making this front grille much higher. I've taken 15mm off this lip which will give me extra airflow to the intercooler. You may be wondering how I will run the intercooler pipes as there's very little room at the front but there is good clearance underneath these front stays. It's set up in quite a convenient place where the inlet and outlet is on either side, literally where the front of the chassis leg is. So it will be a nice short pipe to curve up and around. One of the next jobs I will do is get the bonnet on and then I can sit the inlet manifold on the top and see how much clearance we have. I will be sorting out some more light so um, you'll be able to see stuff but I've just realised that the engine is still tilted forwards so by the time I tilt it back I'll have even more space for this intercooler so I have no concern over packaging. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next week.